All right, good evening. So, uh, I think I'm a little late on this one, not huge late. So, um, I did the 4x4 challenge because I had heard that last Saturday during Gary's diecast collection, he did a live video, and him and Rat Black um, had thrown out the 4x4 challenge, but I didn't also realize that Rat Black threw out a challenge to show um, a 143rd uh, single car. And then I actually found out that, about that by watching uh, Mike Diecast Looney. Uh, and to me, there was some confusion. It was 143rd or 124th. So, you know me, I really can't follow the rules. I love doing these challenges, but I have to do them my way. So this one's only here because I mentioned it when I showed my other 143rd I said my favorite 143rd casting I couldn't find. Um, Francis had knocked it off the shelf and it was uh, on the floor. Um, so this was that Matchbox Dinky, um, you know, 65 Mustang. Uh, but that's not for this video. That's just like proof of life. It exists. Uh, so taking a little liberty here, one casting. Well, these two are a set. Uh, from Hallmark Keepsakes. Thunderbird, 50th anniversary since 1955, so 2005, said this was a gift from my husband, you know, 16, uh, 15 and a half years ago. Um, and so this doesn't sit on a shelf. These two sit in this box on a shelf, so they don't get a lot of viewing, but they're very special to me. Uh, because, of course, I'm a huge Ford guy. Uh, not just Mustangs, but even Pintos and even Thunderbirds. Uh, so these two 143rd scale, the 1955 T-Bird here. You know, the original. So, and for those of us, well, I guess around the world, you remember that TV show Vegas with Robert Ulrich. Uh, he drove one of these in that. Uh, so Private Detective driving around in a in a 55 T-Bird. Um, so this is pretty cool. So it's got 2005. You know, 143rd, you can expect a certain level of details. Uh, no opening parts on this one. Uh, metal body plastic chassis. So um, Hallmark Cards, Inc. So I don't know who makes them for Hallmark, but they're a nice quality. And who doesn't love a 55 T-Bird? But the one I truly love is this 2005 T-Bird, the Retro Bird. Um, a, a much maligned car. A, um, you know, in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, there was that whole retro um, fad, you know, the PT Cruiser, the Chevy HHR, the Chevy SSR, the new VW Beetle, um, the 2005 Retro Mustang, which, of course, was a huge hit. Uh, and this T-Bird that came out. And I love this T-Bird. Now, so this T-Bird shared a platform uh, with the Lincoln LS and with the Jaguar S-Type. Uh, it did have a, a V8, but a, a small V8, a, a 4.2 liter V8. Uh, borrowed from the Jag and the Lincoln LS. The uh, suspension setup meant that the engine bay was too narrow for the then available 4.6 liter modular V8 that replaced the old overhead valve 5 liter V8. Um, so, and this had a very respectable 252 horsepower, and I believe there was even a uh, supercharged version. Um, and, uh, these were heavily criticized for being too retro, too funky. I think they're, I think they're fantastic. This one here just has painted headlights and uh, no inserted details there. Painted taillights. But these two are among... I have a very small 143rd scale collection. But they are among my favorites. And because it's a two-car set, I'm going with the, you know, single casting. 
Uh, but just like Mike from Diecast Looney, I'm going to do one, uh, one, one forty third scale, and then I'm going to do one one twenty fourth scale, and I have a few more one twenty fourth scale. Uh, I probably have half a dozen one twenty fourth scale, um, mostly Fords, but not all. I actually have two BMWs and a Jaguar, and I was tempted to pull them out, but this is truly one of my favorites. And this is the, the Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt. Uh, and this, I believe, is a Maisto. Yep, Maisto. 1964 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt. And for those that are not familiar with the Thunderbolt, uh, which Hot Wheels and others make in 164, I have... I'm pretty sure I have the Hot Wheels Thunderbolt somewhere. I believe my friend Jorn from Chasing Diecast Cars sent me that. But I also have this beautiful Ertl American Muscle. Uh, probably more detailed than the Maisto, honestly. Uh, but the Maisto is very nice. It's got this odd eggplant muted purple. Um, but it is a very nice model. Uh, Lens headlights, and the inner headlights are not broken. Um, the inner headlights have been removed because this was a special lightened version of the intermediate Fairlane that was modified heavily for racing. Uh, in the early 60s, the big three had, uh, you know, a gentleman's agreement not to throw big engines in little cars, and then, of course, they all broke that rule. So this has a 427 cubic inch V8, 7 liter V8, making over 425 horsepower in what, for uh, by American standards, would be a mid-size car. Uh, and you can see the 427 emblem there. And so it wasn't just a big engine, but it was a heavily modified for racing big engine. And the uh, the headlights here in the center were taken out so they could hook up these ram air tubes right to the air cleaner and force as much air into that sucker down the line as possible. And this reverse teardrop hood is meant to uh, draw heat out from underneath the hood. Uh, then it's got chrome steely wheels. This door, after many years, is a little wonky. There we go. Uh, but they've done a nice job with the chrome trim, the emblem here. And, um, you know, I, I've mentioned before, my family, I grew up uh, driving around in the 1963 Fairlane for the first few years of my life as, as a toddler and so forth. My family had one of these in a four-door uh, with, a, with a small V8, a 260. Um so Maestro did a nice job with this. It's got lens taillights, chrome bumper, the license plate hot 427. Uh, I don't know if the... Oh, I guess the hood doesn't... The trunk doesn't open on this one, which is actually sort of unusual on 124 scale. But... So... There's a tachometer. There's all the gauges. There's the shifter. The shifter's a little small for this model. It actually would have extended higher up in the actual car. So molded detail, but not a lot of painted detail. And, uh, well, maybe now that I really don't want, I've had this, I've had this model for a long time. I want to say 20 years. I've had the Thunderbirds for 15. Um, I honestly forget where I found this uh, in some store, Toys R Us probably. Um, and it is, it, is, it is one of the gems of my large... Well, it's not really. It's one of my nicer 124th scale. So this is for the challenge. Um, but, of course, I'm juvenile and I have to, uh, you know, sort of bend the rules here. So recently, a viewer, uh, when I was doing my diecast tour, small model collector said, I spy... A 2000 SVT Mustang Cobra R. 
in the background. Good eye, by the way, because <laughs> it was only on the screen for a few seconds. Uh, but this... So I have cars from 118, 124, uh, 138, 143, 164, and I think I have one 170 second scale. Um, and I have quite a few pieces in, in the 118 scale that I'm very proud of. I have shown the 2005 Thunderbird in red, and I've shown the Ford 49, and the uh, recent gift from my friend, the 1949, uh, 1950 Ford convertible. But I also have several Mustangs, the 65, 67, 69 uh, Mustangs. I have a 1948 Woody convertible that I have to clean up. It's a little dusty. But because this one was spotted by a keen eye in the background, I figured I would show this beauty off. And so this is a limited number, limited production. I believe there were only uh, less than 500 of these made. I have only ever seen this in person, I think, twice in my life. These are huge, supercharged, uh, 5.4 liter V8s. Um, so they are the modular uh, overhead cam version, like the 4.6 liter, and this is a supercharged 5.4. I actually forget the horsepower rating on these. They were beasts. Um... And they were meant basically for racing, but they were snatched up by collectors. Um, I think they were only ever sold in this red. Uh, and you paid quite a price for this, for a car that has no back seat, has no radio, has no air conditioning, uh, but tons and tons of power. And so this model is also made by Maisto. So on, on 164, Maisto... Fresh metal and so forth are, are not really great. They're an eh, meh brand. But in the larger scale, Maisto does a hell of a job. So this has steerable front suspension, nicely detailed engine, transmission, catalytic converters, the transmission brace, the complicated exhaust system where the mufflers actually kick back here for side exit. Uh, this independent rear suspension which mustang lovers will know has bone, been a bone of contention over the years between ford and mustang fans gas tank with straps um of course opening hood opening doors nicely detailed interior uh opening trunk not much to see there but all the lens tail lights all the badges done correctly the high mounted stoplight here this insane wing. Um, this so the you can see the brake discs and you can see the calipers. These wheels are 100% accurate. Like I said, I'm a huge Mustang fan. I have seen plenty of these on video and photos, and I have seen two of them up close and personal. I've never driven one. Um, I don't have friends with that kind of money. Um, but um, I remember. In 2004, I went to Nashville, Tennessee for the, uh, for the 40th anniversary of the Mustang weekend. Um, and I actually saw two of these there that weekend. There may actually have been more. Um, and they were real. They were not clones. I saw two real of, of these SVT Cobra Rs. And that was the weekend that they gave us a preview of the 2005 Mustang even before it was in the auto show uh, later that month in New York City uh, and before any of the automotive journalists had uh, the bar embargo had been lifted. So uh, I saw the 2005 Mustang uh, mid-April of uh, 2004 and uh, I immediately fell in love. But I also saw several of these. So uh, that one I figured I'd show off because it was spied in the background. So I don't often do, uh, you know, my larger scale, but there was a challenge. I'm sorry, the wrong ones. So there goes the 143rd and the 124th. 
and then the cheat, the 118th scale. All right, so um, I, I, I hate to be a pain and break the rules, but I, I just have to. I love these, but I truly love this. Uh, so uh, like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, I'd like to give a, a shout out to a new collector who's doing videos that I just discovered today. He subscribed to my channel, and then I went over and checked out and watched his videos, and I subscribed to his. And that's Whole Lotta Zep. As in a whole lot of love from Led Zeppelin, whole lot of Zepp. Uh, his name is Rick. He's here from the United States. Um, and he uh, uh, really just started collecting a few months ago and only started doing videos, uh, I think last, I think it was the, this month, May. So only a week or two. Uh, he's only got a handful of videos, but he, uh, you know, he's, he's there. Uh, go on over and check out his, his channel. Um, and, uh, you know, he's looking for advice and input, you know, on different die cast brands and on how he can improve. Um, I told him to check out David of twice because infamously David was the first person to give me a piece of advice on my channel where he simply said, turn the camera sideways, Joe. And the rest is history. So, uh. Thank you all for watching. Uh, comment down below. Uh, Rat Black and Gary, uh, I'm mean, sorry, George, George's miniature cars. Um, guys, please give me uh, a pass on the 118th scale. I just couldn't, I couldn't resist. All right. So thanks for watching. Good night.